So, recently I've managed to find and watch uh, some old Dai movies, and when I say old, I mean they're cult classics that I should have seen in a, in a while. So for the next two videos, I'm going to be reviewing a pair of trilogies all in one. Um, because, well, to be fair, one is uh, uh, four movies, but I'm just going to focus on the original trilogy. And we're going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk. Um, I'm going to be talking about Dai's uh, Yokai Monsters trilogy. Now, if you don't know what Yokai Monsters is, Yokai Monsters are basically uh, spirits, demons, and supernatural beings. It's all kind of generally put together in one in in one thing. Like it's all like an in, all encompassing description of Japanese spirits and supernatural beings in Japan. And Yokai Monsters was Dai's um, trilogy that recently had a movie last year that kind of furthered it. It was called Yokai Monsters uh, All Out. I think Yokai War. Yeah, it was called Yokai Monsters Yokai War. And I haven't seen that one yet, so I can't re uh, I can't review that one. But I can review because I have seen the original trilogy. So that's what we're going to talk about in this review. I'm going to kind of do like an all-encompassing review, and for the other one, which if this movie's not, this video is not po uh, posted yet, you probably know what other Dai thing I'm going to be reviewing next. Um, which yeah, I should have done in a while. Anyway. Uh, so let's start with uh, Yokai Monsters 100 Tales. Yokai Monsters 100 Tales is probably the most horror centric of the trilogy. It is very much. It feels like a horror movie. It is actually like um, it's the darkest of the of the three because the other two are a little more light hearted, even though they do have some kind of scary moments. Um, this movie is about a uh, landowner who terrorizes a town and more or less wants to tear down a shrine to build a brothel. Classy. So, obviously, this upsets some supernatural shit going on. And there's some great horror in here, and Dai did some really good, uh, some really damn good um, practical effects in here. Like how they do uh, the snake neck woman. I know it has a name, but I'm completely forgetting said name. But the how they do the the stretching of the neck is amazing, and there are some genuine scares in here, from the no faces to the uh, kappa and whatnot. There are some generally really good scares in here, and there's some almost like disturbing imagery. And it's weird too because I believe this was billed as a kids movie, and I'm like. I don't know what kid is going to watch this and not have nightmares, but I guess kids in Japan just had stronger resolve. <laughs> it actually feels very much like a... It, it, weirdly enough, it does kind of feel like a uh, Twilight Zone episode. It really does feel like an extended episode of the Twilight Zone, of just the tone and the all-around storytelling in of itself. But 100 Tales is definitely really cool, and the reason why you're wondering if it's called 100 Tales is because it's part of a ritual. It's actually a thing in Japan nowadays, apparently, where people will sit in a dark room and light 100 candles, where they will each tell 100 scary stories, and with each scary story they put out a candle, making the room progressively darker. Um... It's also like kind of like their equivalent of like a Ouija board, apparently. I'm not well versed in that, but I think it's, from what I understand, it is something like a Ouija board, like their equivalent of the like the Ouija board, or like a, um, like an all uh, like an all encompassing, kind of like that. It is ve it's very much like a Ouija board or like your Bloody Mary kind of scenario in Japan. Um, yeah, I, I will say right now, and this is kind of a deviation from the review, is that this really does feel like, I swear to God, Japan urban legends and, um, and mythology has got us beat. North American mythology, you know, all our, all our urban legends and tales, oh, they, they don't hold a candle to what the urban legends and folklore in Japan is like, like, seriously. That shit, like I had to like I was watching no lie I was watching a video talking about Japanese mythology and whatnot, and I literally had to stop the video because I was like this is this is too much man this is too much, <laughs> and that's kind of what I got from the feel of this movie. It's very much invokes that horror feel of the uh, of the stories of these characters. Now it's interesting to note 
that the de- there is kind of a deviation from the other two because these movies aren't connected. They aren't very connected, just in title only. Because they all kind of feel like their own film. Um, even though it is part of an all-encompassing trilogy. I've said all-encompassing like five times. I need to fix that. But the first movie's really good. It's a straight-up horror movie. There is no, there is some violence in there, but it's nothing too tense. If I was to say, like, this would be your first... If you wanted to get into J-horror, this would probably be... 100 Tales would probably be, like, your nice little opener. Like, to see if you like it or not. I'm not gonna th- suggest throwing yourself into, like, Haosu or Audition or something of that nature because this this is a nice stop like if you want to check this out i would say check that out and then maybe do vampire doll from toho that would probably work but anyway so the second movie is actually my favorite of the trilogy the second movie is a little more kitty but it does kind of have that horror element it's more action than anything else the story in the second movie is that an, a babylonian demon called daimon has a wo- has been freed from a, from the ancient ruins and is found his way to Japan, where he's taken over a Shinto, a, a, a old feudal era castle. And the Kappa that lives there is like, the fuck dude, what do you do to my house? And Daimon defeats the Kappa, he runs back and talks to his, um, to his friends, the other yokai, to ask for his help to get him out of the house. Meanwhile, the other servants and lords, because Daimon has pos- killed and possessed um, the lord of the house and is now, like, demanding children to feed upon. Um, so one of the samurai have to investigate to find out what's going on with their lord's change. So this is, does have some violent scenes here and there, but this is definitely more, of the, uh, more like, action-centric because it is really fun. Like, it is kind of cool to see the yokai as the good guys because they're here, they, like, run to save the children because their whole thing is we can't let a unknown monster roam around in our country that makes us look bad and also it's like an invasive species i've never really seen a movie i rarely so ever see a movie where a creature from another world like from the western world enter the world of the eastern world it's usually the other way around where you have the you have like a demon or spirit from the east from japan invade somewhere in the west you never see you hardly ever see the other way around and you could make the argument that maybe this is like kind of like a pseudo way of like um maybe it's like you know japan resisting foreign powers and whatnot you could make that argument i don't see it but like i could see it like i personally don't see it but i know some film critics gonna be like oh it's a it's a very nationalist kind of way to, of thinking like the japanese do defying foreign powers invading their land i'm like okay dude back up (laughs) that's that's a little much it's a cool monster fight just don't overthink it um also this movie was made in the 70s at the height of which you could argue is the height of japan japanese culture um really integrating with western culture and uh, uh western ideals I'm not the biggest on 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 uh, geopolitical country the the geopolitical climate of country so I'm gonna I I don't go any further. There's tons of other better videos that will ex- describe that. But getting back to the movie, Yokai Monsters is very effect heavy, which is really good. Again, the practical effects in uh sp- this movie is called Yokai Warfare Spook Warfare. I don't think I've mentioned that, but yeah, Spook Warfare definitely has a lot of great practical effects. I think the acting is all right. It is definitely more... I wouldn't say it's kid-centric because there is some kind of scary imagery in the, in the film. But the final fight, the last 15, 20 minutes of the film, is just nothing but an army of yokai fighting like Cl- Daimon who's making clones of himself. And he makes a kaiju version of himself. It's almost like fucking Power Rangers if all the monsters started fighting each other. And it's so much fun. Um, but yeah, Spook Warfare is definitely my favorite of the three. Um, just effects heavy, and it's just, it's just fun. Like, it's just really fun. Finally, we have Yokai Monsters Along with Ghosts. So, Along with Ghosts is, uh, a story about a young girl who has witnessed a murder of a man holding documents to a, to a corrupt, uh, crime lord. Obviously, corrupt, he's crime lord. <laughs> I can't word. Um... 
and she's protected by a Ronin who is who has found his way to her. And along the way, they run into dark spirit into dark spirits who are caring for the child, who are like um, outside caring for the child. This is definitely the most kiddish of the three. But having said that, there is some really like, and also the yokai really do take a back seat as opposed to the other two films where you could make the argument there isn't a lot of yokai stuff in 100 tales but there's definitely a creepiness and aura to it and when they fully go full yokai they go full yokai second film is very yokai centric and more like fun action stuff here it's more of a personal tale that almost feels like lone wolf and cub um I could definitely see, if you were to convert any of these into an anime, along with Ghost, feels like the most anime plot-centric. But, yeah, it's more or less the Ronin is helping this young girl find her long-lost father. And I'm not going to spoil that, but there is something he... There is a pair of dice that involved here that are involved here, and when you find out what the dice are for, it's a little fucked up. And it does explain the yokai uh, intervention as well. This is very the least yokai, but when we see see them, they are used effectively. Like, there is some very effective scares in here. But this one is definitely... Like, you forget that this is a, yoke, a movie about yokai very quick. Like, you really do forget that this movie is about yokai very quick. And, you, and then when they get to it, it's like, oh, right, th this movie, okay, all right. Um, you know, all in all... On a whole, I think this is a lot of fun. I managed to binge... You can still find the movies on YouTube. Um, yeah, I think you still can. Um, that's how I managed to see all of all three of these films. Uh, like I said, I haven't seen Yokai War, the fourth film in this collection. But I heard it's really good. Um, I heard it's very much like Spook Warfare, just turned up to 11. Um, but all in all, if you're looking for like fun, out there stuff that is from Dai, or should I say Katakawa... Um, because, yeah, Dai died off and then Katakawa bought everything. So this is under technically under Katakawa. Um, the people behind, Ga like, Dai, obviously, behind Gamera. And they have a lot of the effects artists and suit, and suit animation uh, production teams from Gamera in these three films. So if you're looking for, like, those uh, that, uh, some fun yokai supernatural horror stuff that will dip your toes into J-horror, I say check out uh, Yokai Monsters. Anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below, what did you guys think of Yokai Monsters if you've seen it? Just comment below, let me know, and as always, if you haven't already, hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon. Other than that, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.